Hi, my name's Herb McCormick. I'm an editor at large for Cruising World magazine, and I'm here on the upper reaches of Narragansett Bay on an absolutely beautiful day aboard a vintage Sabre 36 that's undergoing a complete refit, including Harkin electric winches, powered winches. I'm here with the Refits project manager, Skip Matos, who has done a tremendous job putting this all together. And I'm gonna run a few questions by Skip just to give you an overview of exactly what's happening here with this project. Skip, we're here at a beautiful Sabre 36, a, a, a really classic racer cruiser. Tell me about how you got involved with this project and what it entailed. So this project started one day, I was walking down the dock here at the Yacht Club and the owner asked me to look at his traveler. And we discussed a couple different options for fixing his traveler, but then I said, you know, it could be interesting to actually change the winches out. They're pretty old, parts aren't really available anymore. And I said, you know, you and your wife sail the boat a lot in cruising mode as much as you do race mode. So what about the option of powering some of the winches and making the experience easier for you both? Skip, just take me through the layout of this cockpit and how you approached it. What winches you were gonna change and the sizing requirements. What, what, what were you thinking about as you, as you got into this project? So the biggest thing I looked at was certainly the primaries being a boat with an overlapping Genoa. That's gonna be the, the brunt of the load that needs to be handled. Um, so certainly powered primaries were key. So one of the things I thought about with this project was how to control the main sheet. The boat does race Tuesday evenings here at the club and getting the most control with the least expense. Um, so what we've done is we've set up one powered winch and then we have a second manual winch on the opposite side of the boat. We're gonna set the boat up with two button stations, one on starboard and one on port. The main sheet will be continuously spliced together so it's basically a big loop. And then the person trimming the mainsail will be able to sit on either side of the boat and trim the main by turning this winch using the buttons. When you're on port tack, the main trimmer will actually be able to ease on the port winch and trim utilizing the starboard winch. So kind of a neat way of getting maximum value out of the winches without having to have the second motor and the second wiring set up. Skip, I know one big question everybody's gonna have is they look at their own winches and what the setup is. How do you know what size you're gonna to have to replace the winches? So the great thing is with Harkin, we've had a lot of experience dealing with different boats of different varieties. The materials online are really good at helping spec winch size. And then honestly speaking with a professional that can help give you some guidance is also a great way just to reaffirm what you're thinking. The previous Lumar winches were actually 46s, so it was a pretty straightforward, okay, that makes sense, let's, let's go with that. Um, the cabin top winches, we went to the smallest powered size, so that was kind of self-indicating. So with this winch, I simply matched the previous winch because we wanted to make sure we had the same power or pulling power. Uh, the way our winches work when they're in powered mode is they use the central shaft and use all the gearing in the winch. So very much the motor acts as the human would act, spinning the gears, moving the winch. Skip, I really believe that having power winches really does transform the sailing experience, but can you talk a little bit about how that actually translates when you have uh, you know, a shorthanded crew or kids or people on board? So the great thing about the powered winches is as long as the, the people know how to use them correctly, the winch will do the work for you, just not the thinking. And anyone can operate a powered winch. So it negates the size difference of bigger people, smaller people, older people, younger people. I kind of think of it as the great equalizer. So you can sail, you know, however long as you want, starting as little as you want or as old as you want. Skip cruising boats. One thing that's always on every owner's mind is the power consumption, topping off the batteries. How much power am I going to use on this? And I personally would think, you know, is that going to be a, a blockade for me to get into the uh, Harkin winches? Tell me about the power requirements. That's a great question. And everyone always asks, well, how much battery do I need? How often do I have to recharge? And really what it comes down to is, well, how often are you going to hit the button? One way that's kind of neat about our winches is to conserve power. If you want, you can simply always stick the handle in the top of the winch and there's a disconnect rod that'll actually knock the motor out. So if you have to make a small adjustment, it's not that big a deal. You can put the handle in, do a couple of cranks, keep going, pull the handle back out. If you say you want to tack, and you need to use a lot of energy. Well, then that's the point where you maybe you push the button. So it really comes down to how you use the boat. Not always easy to quantify, but it's not as bad as everyone seems to think it is before they start to dig deeper into the subject matter. And what about wiring? What about actually hooking it up? Is that a, is that a complicated process? It's not a complicated process. The biggest thing 
you have to do is make sure you get the right size wire. You know, people tend to want to go smaller wire and really you get voltage loss and it's not recommended. There are some instructions in the manual that say, you know, specific wire sizes based upon how long of a run you have to make. Personally, I'm not the most electrical savvy person, so I usually tend to ask a professional, so there are no issues. And I think with these kind of installations, that's always a great thing. Just second set of eyes or maybe have the boatyard do that part of the installation for you. Skip, let's get into the specifics of this project. What were the exact power requirements? Did you need extra batteries or anything along those lines? So with this particular boat, uh, the owner has three batteries. We didn't feel like we needed to add one right off the bat. The big thing to remember is the winches aren't running constantly like a refrigerator or an air conditioner or even your electronics. The winches are only operating when you're pressing the button. It does require a decent amount of amperage for the first initial burst, but you're not running the winches for more than five to maybe 15 seconds at most in any given time. So yeah, it's a lot of power at once, but it's actually done pretty infrequently. Skip, walk me through the placement of the buttons and exactly how they work. Okay, so what we're gonna do is start with the main sheet winch. So this winch is powered. We have two buttons here. First speed, second speed. So we'll just kind of highlight those. Then on the opposite side of the cockpit for the racing mode, which is the smaller focus of this owner, we're gonna have two more buttons, first and second. And one thing I like to make sure is I orient them inboard, outboard in the same way. So that way you never get confused depending on what side of the boat you're on. The next thing we're gonna do pretty standard is we'll do two more buttons over here. So first and second, that'll drive this winch. Something a little different, we'll add a second set of buttons on the outboard combing. And these outboard buttons will actually drive the lured or offside winch. That'll allow for more functionality. The trimmer will be able to sit on the rail with the sheet in their hand and actually ease and trim while going upwind. Another potential future option is to actually add some helm buttons for cruise mode. So as the owner gets more comfortable with the boat, we can add multiple buttons back aft. And these don't necessarily have to drive both first and second speeds. You can actually say, hey, I only want to trim one winch in second gear. And the other button can be the other winch. So it gives you a little bit of functionality just by using a little more wire and some buttons. Take me through the actual placement of the motors. Was it very difficult to access uh, getting the room to uh, actually fit the, uh, the motors for these winches? So it was interesting. The cabin top winch was actually pretty neat with a couple little tweaks that you can make based on the adjustability built into the winches. I was actually able to fit the motor inside a cabinet that already exists, which was fantastic. For the primaries, the access point is actually gonna be through the speaker behind you, and we're gonna slide the motor and gearbox in and then put them in place. So with every boat, there's probably a little bit of a creative challenge as to how you approach that part of the project. Absolutely. The combing thickness on this boat was a little bit of a surprise, so that was a, a challenge to be overcome, but with every challenge, there's a solution. So it's just a little bit of thinking and a little bit of work. So Harkin, thankfully, makes different orientations of motor. There's a 90-degree motor, which is called horizontal, where the gearbox comes down, and the motor sticks off 90 degrees to the vertical shaft. We have vertical motors, which are just that, they're just a cylinder that come down. There are hydraulic options, as well as adapter kits or spacer kits that you can actually shim the motors down in different lengths. So it gives you the ability to really tune the fit of the motors to each vessel. The horizontal motors, based on the fact that the gearbox is slightly offset from the central shaft, you can actually get left and right hand motors. On this particular boat, we had to convert one of the gearboxes to left hand, and it fit perfectly in the space. It was actually one of the great parts of the flexibility we have. So Skip, obviously we've got one of the units here. Take me through exactly what I'm looking at. All right, so the breakdown of this is, this is the motor portion. So this is the actual electrical part. This can come in 12, 24, or 48 volt, which is kind of cool. Um, if you do 48 volt, you need a, to specify 12 or 24 volt for the control side. This section here is the gearbox. Um, this is a horizontal oriented gearbox. There's an adapter flange that mounts on top of here, which bolts directly to the winch. This is kind of cool. This is the plunger shaft. So this shaft moves up and down. So when you use the winch handle disconnect, the shaft actually gets compressed by the winch handle going in, which disconnects the coupler from the bottom of the winch, so you can free spin the winch. So this winch motor gearbox assembly will actually mount underneath the winch through this combing. And as I said previously, we're gonna go through this speaker hole 
and slide the winch motor and gearbox in and then slide it up the combing underneath the winch. Skip, I know many owners already have Harkin winches aboard their boats, but they're not electric winches. But I do understand that there's a way to retrofit existing Harkin winches. Can you tell me more about that? Yeah, so if you have any of the radial or performer line winches, there are refit kits available. Um, the biggest thing you need to do is figure out how you want to orient the motor, what voltage you need. And then there are some parts that are required that you need to remove the base of the winch to pop out the plug that's in the bottom, but the radial and performer line can be converted. Unfortunately, the older classic winches are no longer able to be converted. Skip, that's an awesome overview. Let's go down below and see how this actually comes all together. Sounds good. Skip, we've had a look at the motor top side. Now we're down below. Show me the other components on the install. Okay, so Herb, we've got here the dual function control box. This is a takeaway from what we did years ago where this actually integrates both the directional control as well as the load control. So it's very important to make sure M1 goes to M1 and M2 goes to M2. These boxes are pretty neat. They're set up to actually allow for traditional analog buttons, which give you a variety of buttons, as well as Harkins digital switching, which plugs directly into this part of the box. The other component you'll need is a circuit breaker. These are very specific circuit breakers that are called slow blow breakers. They actually allow the amperage to go over the rated amperage on the breaker for a short period, which allows the winch to go to peak pull load. You'll also need wiring and end fittings, but that's based on how the boat's set up. Skip, show me how you've installed one of these motors. Sure, let me show you. So I got very lucky with how well this fit in the space. We didn't actually have to modify any of the cabinetry. We were able to play with the orientation of the motor based on some of the adjustability that's built into the motor assembly. The gearbox was tweaked to allow the motor to fit, and then the motor itself was actually rotated 90 degrees to allow easy access for the wiring. The next things that'll be installed will be the dual function control box. And I'd like to use this space because it allows for easy troubleshooting. It also minimizes the wire runs. The circuit breaker will be mounted here as well, giving easy access for anyone in the future. So Herb, talking about some of the different intricacies of every installation, I found it really neat to see this is the section of deck for the main sheet winch. And here's the section underneath the combing that supports the primary winch. Clearly the folks at Sabre were making sure this boat wasn't going anywhere for a while. They don't build them like they used to, mate. They certainly don't. If you're interested in faster and better sail handling and optimizing your boat for safer and more efficient shorthanded sailing with your family and friends, then Harkins electric winches may be an ideal upgrade.